to go into the details of the marker and cell method, the MEC method. This method uh, uses the conservative form of the momentum equations. So we look first at that. The one that we saw before, that was the non conservative form. Um, we can do that because we have the continuity equation. So now I write it uh, symbolically uh, with indices as derivatives, that a bit faster. And then we have the u squared. So instead of have u du dx plus v du dy, we do it now in this way. And then it is conservative because then these u squared and v squared, they, can, they are derived as a whole. And the right hand side is uh, as before, 1 over density, pressure derivative in x plus mu second x second y derivatives and the y momentum equation similarly time derivative then we have u in here x derivative and the z squared y derivative to the right hand side unchanged So and now we can do the two uh, steps of the MEC method. So the first step, um, we solve these uh, equations by the explicit Euler method. That gives us the intermediate velocity components. We first do here for the explanation the discretization in time. Later on, we do also the, the discretization in space. So that means that we do apply the explicit Euler method. That means we have then here the usual. Uh, time derivative, u at the new time level, and that will be our u star. So that is, that is the catch. So for a, we have then the, the u star is then our new time level, but this is only our intermediate velocity component, the next direction. That is equal to the u n minus, and now we multiply everything by the by delta t. Yeah, we, we bring then this here on, on the right hand side, and then it will be the u squared, and that will be then uh, x derivative, and all the quantities that are appearing here will be at the old time level, plus the u v y. And now in the original um, Mac method, the pressure was not included, but it is better to include it because then the U star will be a consistent approximation of the velocity U n plus 1. So if we include it here, so then it will be 1 over rho in x. And if we write all under the 
minus uh, we have here the minus that would be then the u x x plus the u y y and all this I write it now symbolically in this way n means that all quantities appearing here are at the old time level that is meant by that so that is a very easy operation it is an explicit method that can be computed very easily how we do this discretization we take that later but first the, the idea so that was for the x momentum now for the y momentum we get similarly the v star by discretizing this here by v star minus vn over delta t we bring them to the right hand side and multiply uh, first by delta t and then we get the vn the component of the whole time level minus the delta t and now we take everything that we have there at uh, the old time level so that is the u vx plus the v squared y we also include the pressure derivative that was not done in the original MAC method but it is for the better to do it and vxx and vyy all at the old time level so then by that we have done we can get the intermediate velocity components um, v star u star and v star so that is the first step now the second step is we want the velocity component at the new time level to be divergence free so that is determine n plus 1 and v n plus 1 with the new pressure uh, p n plus 1 such that um, we have um, the velocity at the new time level is so annoyed that means it fulfills the Continuity equation u n plus one v n plus one is solenoidal or divergence free. So how do we do that? First, we imagine what we have done here is we have taken the pressure at the old time level. We imagine we take now the want to take the pressure at the new time level. So that that makes things, makes the velocity divergence free. So then we make the ansatz that the new velocity component, un plus 1, should be equal to the intermediate one minus delta t times, and now we have the pressure difference, I, I denote by p prime x. But the p prime is the change from the old time level to the new time level. So that is the idea. And what uh, and the similar idea is then also for the y momentum equation. Then we say we want to take the v component at the new time level by taking the preliminary one and then taking also into account the pressure at the new time level, but now it will be then at the, uh, we will have the y derivative. And again, it, the, it's this p prime that we use. So that is the, we could call that the pressure correction that we have here. Pressure correction. That is the p prime that is used in both cases. How can we motivate that? If you look at things, we have here in the, in the x-momentum equation, we have essentially done this u star minus u n divided by delta t is equal to, and then we have here the minus uh, 
everything that is in brackets and I want to highlight the 1 over rho, the Pn x and so on. What we do here is we do the following. We do here. We do the un plus 1 minus the u star divided by delta t is equal to the uh, minus, let's see, I think I forgot the 1 over rho here. Yes, I forgot the 1 over rho. And add that in a simple way. Here, the 1 over rho was forgotten, so please add that. In front, 1 over rho, because that you need. So then we have here the 1 over rho, and if we use the definition of the p prime, we have here the Pn plus 1 minus the Pn x derivative. So that is what, what the P prime is, difference from O to the new tab. And now look, if we add these two equations, then the, here we have in front, let's see, we have the minus, yeah, here we have the minus, 1 over rho px, and here minus, minus the plus. So if we add these two equations, we get that the un plus 1 minus the un divided by delta t is equal, what we have here, the convection, but regarding the pressure term, we will have the pressure, the Pn, that will go with this one, and we will have the pressure at the new time level. So then we have minus 1 over rho Pn plus 1x plus the diffusive terms. So that is the catch here, that we take essentially the pressure at the new time level. And that gives us then a freedom to use that the, the new pressure to make the velocity divergence free. And what I, the argument that I use here for showing you <coughs> how this uh, pressure at the new time level comes in for the x direction is the same for the y direction. If you just write it for the y momentum equation, you will see you will get a similar thing then for minus one over rho uh, px py. So that is the, you could say, the ansatz. We want then to determine the Pn plus 1, or in our case, simply the P prime, the pressure correction, such that this velocity at the new time level is divergence free. So then we simply write what this condition means, that the velocity at the new time level should be divergence free, or solenoidal. So, let's see, we require that the divergence of the velocity at the new time level is zero. So that is, that is our condition. That is the continuity way that we require. And now, um, we insert our ansatz in here. So this is a, so this is equivalent to saying that we have in this form that the u n plus one x plus the v y n plus one is equal to zero. That is what we want to have. And now we insert our ansatz five. A and B into this equation. So what do we get? We get the, let's see, now I did it in this way, okay. We get that we have, uh, let's see. 
it's easier to see if we do it in, in this equation. It doesn't matter. It's just a matter of uh, writing. But, oh, we can we can do it. Let's, uh, let's see it. So let's do it. So we insert that, and what do we get? We get that the u star x minus the delta t 1 over rho the p prime x that was from there and we have to take another derivative of that because you see we insert for the u n plus 1 we insert what we have here the u star so we have to take then the x derivative of this we have to take the x derivative so we get the u star x and this is constant here we get the p prime xx plus the y derivative of this gives v star y minus this constant p prime yy so then we get plus the v y star minus delta t 1 over rho p y y star and the condition is that should be zero and that gives us a Poisson equation for the pressure. So, from that we get, or rather for the pressure correction, a Poisson equation for pressure correction. original max scheme where the pressure gradient was not considered in the first step it gives a pressure the Poisson equation for the pressure at the new time level for the pn plus one but this one is better so what do we get that is equation six if we take this here to the right hand side then we will get p xx prime plus pyy prime is equal to and now we have then the still we have the ux star and the vy star and we uh, multiply that by rho over delta t so that is the rho over delta t and then we have here the ux star plus the V Y star. Remember, we know the U star and the V star from the first step. That we have determined by the explicit Euler method in the first step. And now we get a condition on the pressure correction that guarantees that we get a divergence-free velocity. So what we do is, we solve this equation, get the peak prime everywhere, and then we use that to correct the velocity. Then we can compute the peak prime x, the peak prime y, and can compute then the velocity at the new time level. And then we have, by the construction, the construction a divergence-free velocity field. So that is then the, the way to do it. So we can note that when P prime is determined, then the velocity components at the new time level, U and V n plus 1 are computed from our answers, that is 5a and b. So then we have the recipe of the Mac method. First determining the intermediate velocity components u star and v star by just taking the momentum equations, solving that with the explicit Euler method, taking the pressure at the old time level, and then 
taking the pressure at the new time level also into account by this ansatz, inserting that in the continuity equation and getting the Boston equation for the pressure correction. Solving for the pressure correction and then use that in this ansatz to correct the velocity. What we do here can also be interpreted as a projection method. Originally, we have the intermediate velocity components u star and v star, and by this step, they are projected, projected on the space, on the vector space of divergence-free vectors. And the agent or the, the guy that does the job is the pressure correction. So then. Um, so the step two that we have here, we have just discuss, discussed, can be considered as projection of u star of, let's write it in this way, v star equal u star on the vector space or the space of the solenoidal vectors, divergence free vectors. And that is then the reason why the MAC method is a projection method. Regarding the boundary conditions, we can usually assume at the boundaries that the normal component of the velocity at the new time level is equal to the normal component of the intermediate velocity. If we do that, then it means that we have a normal derivative of p prime zero. Let us just uh, write that. So, assuming that the u n plus one, let me take the code, the whole velocity vector, the v will be n dot. N is the outer unit normal vector at the boundary that is equal to the normal velocity of the preliminary uh, component. Then 5a and b yield that the normal times the gradient of p prime and that is the normal velocity component of p prime is zero. So then we have a boundary condition. Of course, uh, that, let's see. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's right. Regarding the pressure level, you know, in an incompressible flow, the pressure is, we have no pressure level. We have to fix it at some point because the equations only tell us about something about the difference the gauge pressure. So we have then to fix the pressure level at some point in the, in the flow field. And then we compute the pressure relative to that pressure level. But that is uh, classical for the incompressible navier stokes equations. But this then yields uh, a Neumann condition for the pressure. So that's number seven. So where N is the uh, unit normal at the boundary. So we 
we're talking now about boundary condition. So then we have that. And then we have completed the idea. So computing preliminary velocity components by solving the momentum equations with the explicit Euler method. And then correcting those using the pressure correction difference between the pressure of the new and the old time level such that the new velocity is divergence true. And that gives us a Poisson equation for the pressure correction. When we have that pressure correction P prime, we use it to correct the velocity. And then we have from I, uh, we have then the velocity at the new time level, and of course the pressure at the new time level, we use this equation. So that is the square, so the, the Pn plus 1, and that, that is Pn plus 1, that is of course then Cn plus P prime. So that is, and once we have P prime, we have also the pressure at the new time level. So then we have the, the whole um, procedure, the whole algorithm. What is missing is the discretization of the derivatives in the momentum equation and also the, the derivatives here in the Poisson equation and also in the correction equation here. So that is then the, the second part of the or the, the other ingredient of the Mac method that is then related to the spatial discretization. Okay. And that, for that we use something special that was also invented by these people, Haldo and Belch, and that has been used further on and is still in use. There are alternatives nowadays, of course. And that is called staggered drift. The reason for using that and using not a traditional grid where we have all velocity components and the pressure just at the grid points is when we would use it, we would have a decoupling of pressure and velocity. The, velocity. the method would not recognize when we have a so-called checkerboard pattern of the pressure, so like a checkerboard plus minus and above minus plus and so on. The method would not realize that and uh, that is not acceptable. But with this technique, it is possible then that we have a tight coupling between velocity and pressure and we can then compute uh, and solve the incompressible analysis. I sketch it just for a, a very small grid. So where we have um, just three by three cells. And then the idea is the following. We assume that we have the pressure <coughs> located in the center of these cells. So for example here I denote it by the pressure it would be then at Ij. That means also the pressure itself and the pressure correction they, they sit there. And I use also a special notation that is related to I think it was introduced by Patanka. I use capital letters for the indices for the pressure. So then the Eastern neighbor has been the P I plus one J and the western neighbor has then P I minus one J. The northern neighbor has P I J plus one, the southern neighbor has P I J minus one. So so far so good. Of course we have also a pressure here. Don't write it. And now the catch is that we locate the velocity on the faces 
that have uh, a normal in the x direction. So that means we do the following. We locate the velocity components here on these spaces. And we introduce a special notation also here. We call this, when it is to the left of the pressure, velocity component little i, capital J. So here that would be then the little i plus 1, capital J. So that is the notation. So that means we have our velocity components on the faces that have normal in the x direction. So everywhere here we have the velocity components. Regarding the boundary conditions for them, if we have inflow, we give these velocity components. If we have outflow, we usually extrapolate them. That means this would be the inflow. We would have to give the value of u. If this would be outflow. We would extrapolate it from this. We'll take this over here. So we can imagine that for computing then these uh, U velocity components, we have different grid. We shift the grid, half the grid spacing to the left. So for example, this, to compute this, we would use then a grid that will be like that, a grid cell. So that will be the grid cell for computing the UIJ. And now regarding the velocity component, velocity component in the y direction, we do a similar trick. We say we locate them at the faces with the normal in the y direction. For example here, we will have the v will be the i, that will be the little j plus 1, and here we will have the v capital I little j. So to the south, of the pressure node, we locate the velocity with the same I index, capital I, as the pressure, but lowercase j. And then we have also the V everywhere at the, these faces. Again, when we have inflow, we would give them. When we have outflow, we usually extrapolate them. And if we have a solid wall, then both U and V are zero if we have a stationary wall. In the net driven cavity that we had, then we have this moving, then we would enforce then, say we have a ghost point here, ghost here, we would then enforce the, the ghost value here for the velocity u, such that the value here is equal to the given velocity of the lid. The grid that we use for determining the v is then shifted one delta y, delta y half down. So then the grid would be for computing this guy here, would be this here. So it goes through the pressure. So this would be the grid cell for computing the v. So we have essentially three grids. The original one for computing the pressure, the one shifted half delta x, delta x half to the left for computing the u, and the grid shifted delta y half uh, south for computing the v. So let's see that in this picture. So that is from the textbook Malazekira, Terstege uh, Malazekira on the finite volume method. And here we see the same thing as sketched here. The original grid of the, of, of the cell for the pressure here at the center point P is here, index capital I, capital J. And the grid here for, it's called here the, the U cell for computing U, here is for lowercase i, capital uh, J computing the uij is here, and then for computing the v, which is a capital I, lowercase j, is here, we have the v cell here. That is our yellow cell here. So 
So that is uh, the that is called the staggered grid. That we uh, place our pressure in the center, our u velocity on the faces on in the, with the normal y in x direction, and v at the faces with the normal in the y direction. That is um, what is meant by staggered grid. So, and then now we do the, con the discretization on this grid. So, the continuity equation that was equation 1c is discretized by, let's see what we get for that. dx and now we look for the original cell for the pressure cell and then you see we have exactly the velocity where we need it we have it here at the right face and at the left face so we simply can take this as it is the u little i plus one capital J minus u little i capital J divided by delta x plus and now the v again is sitting exactly at the right place v i j plus one and it is here sitting at the right place so that is the neat thing with the staggered grid things fall into place yeah, really beautifully and that is equal to zero so that is the discretization of the continuity equation. For the exponential equation, And the uh, pressure here, let's see, is there that we don't need at the moment, but the V is here. So the V we can indicate. So at this corner here we have the V. That is the V um, I J. Here we have the V I J plus 1. Here we have the V I minus 1 J plus 1. And here we have the V I minus 1 J. And these guys here are just shifted by one index. Here in I, U I plus 1. The minus one, this is the u j plus one, u j minus one. So then we do the discretization of the exponential equation. And what we have to do is we have to compute there the u star. And we do that at this point, lowercase i capital J is the capital J. And that is equal to this, the location to the value at the old time level, minus delta t. And now we have to discretize the u squared dx. That means we have to compute the u here 
and square it. How can we do that? We can simply take the average of the value here and here. And that would be then the, um, let's see, we, have, we compute now the, the ux squared. We are computing, let's see, no, it's not the ux, it's the u squared. u squared x, that, that we are computing now. So we take first here, what we said, we take the u i plus 1j plus the u i j half. That is then squared minus, similar here. Here we take the average between this and this. So it would be then the u i j plus the u i minus 1j half squared divided by delta x. So that would be the discretization of this u squared x derivative. But then we have the u v y. So that is this one, and then we have uh, plus the u v y, and that would be a y derivative. So the one that we are considering now is the u v y. So that means we have to get it here and here. How do we get the u here? We take the average of these two. And the v, we take these averages here. So let's do that. So we have then the u i j plus 1 plus the u i j half. That is the u approximated here, times the v. And the v is then, so it's the times between i j plus 1 plus the v i minus 1 j plus 1 half. And then we have to have uh, similar expressions at the other side. We get here the problem with the space. And uh, let's see, we would then continue this. Um, Here and then we would then have the minus, so it should sit here, but I have no space here. Continue here. We would then have to do a similar discretization here of u v. U is taken then this average, that is then the u i j, it's a capital J, plus the u i capital J minus one half times the v, and the v is now this here, this average, v i j plus v i minus 1 j half. And all that is divided by delta 1, which would be the, the y derivative. So then we have the convective terms, and now we need the pressure terms. And time is running, so let's see. So we have now the dp dx. exactly where we need it. We have the P sitting here, that is the P i j, and this is the P i minus 1 j. That is, that is the beautiful thing with it. this staggered grid. The values sit where we need them. Divided by delta x. And then we have minus u, and the second as the derivative of u with respect to x, then we just take these lines there in the usual way. That is going to be u um, 
i plus 1j minus the 2ui j plus the ui minus 1j divided by delta x squared. And similarly, for the y direction, when we take these guys here, then the u i j plus 1 minus the 2 ui j plus the u i j minus 1 delta y squared. And here we have a, a big square bracket that is finishing here. And all what we have considered here is at the old time level. So it looks a little bit complicated, but it is rather straightforward taking central differences. In a similar way, we do it for the y-momentum equation. And then, we have not the time to do that now, the Poisson equation can be e easily derived. And there, the nice thing is, again, when we do that, if we need the u star and the v star, they are sitting exactly at the right points. So then we show this. Uh, we solve first for the u star and the v star, then we solve the Poisson equation, and then we do the correction of the velocity, as we discussed before. And that, that's it. And then we can use the stability conditions that we discussed previously for the convection diffusion equation to get the stability of the magnitude. So it is first order in uh, time, second order in space. Okay, I think that should be enough. So then, the idea is with this uh, part of the course to give you an idea how uh, things fall into place. Because we have here convection diffusion equations that we just discussed just before for the momentum equations. And then when we solve the Poisson equation for the pressure, we have a Poisson equation. We have discussed all these bits, uh, parts and we now they are put together to get the complete, complete uh, the solution of the incompressible Navistos equations. Okay, so far, next week, we'll have a summary of the course, and you'll get probably today the test exam, so you can look at that, and we'll go through that exam, um, I expect, on Friday, next Friday. So Thursday, summary, and Friday, um, the test exam. Maybe shift a little bit, but that is the program for next week. Summary of the course and testing.